Okay, so this is roughly where we left off in class uh, on Wednesday. We had talked about the two different ways that B cells can get activated. Uh, remember, this is the most common way here. So uh, any antigen that's a protein is going to not be able to itself activate a B cell. Um, that B cell needs further stimulation to differentiate into a plasma cell. It needs signals from a T helper cell with the correct T cell receptor that matches uh, that, that same antigen that's been presented by some, say, dendritic cell or macrophage. And that T helper cell then will differentiate into a T helper 2 cell. So now here, now we get down here, once the B cell has presented that antigen by MHC class 2, then the activated helper T cell will, when it recognizes that, that same epitope of antigen, it will secrete these cytokines, uh, which now is an additional signal that causes the, the B cell to activate, and then it's going to differentiate into a plasma cell, make antibodies, starts with the IgM antibodies, remember, um, and it will also make some memory cells. Okay, remember the T cell independent antigens that we talked about here, um, that's uh, a quicker activation um, not as good a response, only IgM antibodies and produced and no memory. Uh, plus, young children don't have a very good response to those kinds of antigens. Okay, so if we kind of, we looked at a simul similar figure to this uh, before. If we add a little more detail to this, um, the primary versus the secondary response um, for T-dependent antigens. Okay, so again, this is, this is the most common way that B cells become activated to make antigen. Um, the first time you're exposed to some pathogen, it takes a good long, you know, 10, 12, 13 days really to start kicking out antibody. And now you can kind of understand a little bit why uh, because all these signals have, have to be made. Not only does a B cell, you know, you may only have a few B cells that have the, that recognize that, that particular epitope. And um, so once that B cell with a re B cell receptor recognizes it and a T helper cell gets activated as well, Okay, these, these immunological synapses take some time to find each other. Remember, uh, these are cells that are primarily in the lymph making these connections. So that takes some time uh, through cytokine signaling. Maybe eventually there'll be some class switching uh, and get uh, a little bit more of some other kind of antibody. But here, we're out 20 days already from the first time, you know, that you were you were infected okay so so that's why it, it, maybe this wasn't an infection maybe uh, a person got a vaccine and right the first time it takes a while to get the the you know good antibody production but then the second time a person is exposed either they've got immunity from being sick with that already or now since they've had the vaccine they have memory cells and uh, those memory B cells and memory T helper cells are going to um, not need the levels of activation and cytokines that they had before. So, you know, we're talking about a shorter time frame here. So um, maybe some time. Uh, but you also much quicker get the right kind of antibody that's best going to fight the reaction, fight the, fight the um, invader. So think about if, if we were talking about a T depend, uh, sorry, a T independent reaction rather than a T dependent, uh, 
then the second time would look just like the first. There wouldn't be a primary and a secondary. It would just be like a primary response every time. And of course, there wouldn't be any IgG. Okay, so normally uh, a quicker response, higher antibody titers. All right, so uh, the last big thing we need to talk about here, we talked about B cell activation. Well, we want to try to understand T cell activation as well. So remember the B cells, we think about that being as part of humoral immunity. That means uh, basically in the blood. Uh, antibodies are primarily working on exogenous antigens outside of the cell. All right, we need a response to cells that are infected inside them with some endogenous pathogen like a virus. All right, so the cytotoxic T cells is, is our, our best response to that. Uh, and those cytotoxic T cells, like I talked about, those are, this is heavy duty. This is, we're killing our cells. So we need to make sure that that response is appropriate. So we need some signals from another source and that's from the T helper cells. Uh, most of the time, it's a better response, uh, again, if the T helper, cell, T helper cells are involved. So this is maybe, uh, we're thinking about this in maybe a, a funny order, but um, kind of what I drew in before, they have uh, in your book here in a, a little different order. Uh, but say, if we're thinking about this T helper cell activation first, Say there's some, they call it a naive helper T cell in OpenStax. That just means one that hasn't been activated. Um, it's got a T cell receptor and a, a CD4, um, this glycoprotein on its surface. Okay, so when, when the helper T cell encounters some dendritic cell, some antigen presenting cell like a dendritic cell, that's presenting antigen that it has phagocytized. Okay, it's gonna do that by MHC class two. Uh, the helper T cell recognizes antigen when it's presented by MHC class two. That CD4 binds to that MHC class two to kind of stabilize that interaction. Uh, and once, once this immunological synapse happens, uh, then, then potentially we could get uh, three different subsets of T helper cells. Uh, we could get uh, the T helper one cells. Again, cytokine signals kind of uh, dictate all this. And remember, this is the kind of cell that's going to act on the cytotoxic T cells. The T helper two cells, those were the ones that we saw helped activate B cells. And even some memory helper T cells, so that that uh, activation of the helper T cell doesn't need to happen as well. Okay, so so hold that thought. Now we're going to look at see what happens to this population of Th1 cells. Uh, say we have a cytotoxic T cell. I'm not sure why they call it CTL. That's a little confusing to me. So cytotoxic T cell. Remember, they have that CD8 glycoprotein. Uh, we're going to see how that gets activated. Uh, say over here we have uh, one of our cells that's infected with some intracellular pathogen, and it's advertising at by its MHC class 1. Okay, remember, all cells with a nucleus will advertise just sort of what's going on in the cell by MHC class 1. All right, so here's a close-up. Uh, the, the cytotoxic T cell that, that has already been activated, um, well, most of the time that's because it's been acted on by, by the Th1 uh, cells, and those cyto cytokine signals are acting on the, um, the cytotoxic T cell. Um, apparently, it is enough sometimes for that cytotoxic T cell just to come in contact with an antigen that it recognizes with its T cell receptor. Uh, 
uh, but it's going to be even a better response if it's got uh, those uh, cytokine signals from the T helper one. All right, uh, what happens when this cytotoxic T cell becomes activated? Uh, then it's going to um, act on cells that are um, that are expressing this antigen with MHC class one, and it's going to use a couple of different cytokines to bring about the programmed cell death of that infected cell. Okay, I like this other diagram a little bit better from our old textbook. Uh, the way that the cytotoxic T cells act to actually kill that virally infected cell uh, is these, these two cytokines, perforin and granzyme. Okay, perforin is a cytokine kind that acts to uh, perforate or uh, poke holes in the infected cell's membrane. Okay, so you can see in this picture, this little perforin complex here, it's, it's poking hole in the infected host cell. And then the other cytokine, uh, granzyme, it was going to enter the host cell and causes uh, uh, basically the suicide of the cell, or uh, another way to say that is apoptosis. Okay, or again, a programmed cell death. Uh, that's much better than lysing that virally infected cell, because if you lyse it, uh, there might be viruses in there that are being assembled and that would just give them a chance to, you know, maybe leave the cell and infect other cells. So you kind of just want that cell to die and to not release any of its contents right away. Okay, so there are other ways, there's at least one other way that cytotoxic T cells can act to kill the cell. Uh, we think this is the most common, that perforin granzyme, uh, like you could call it a pathway, I guess. So again, we get a more vigorous response if those uh, differentiated T helper cells are acting on that cytotoxic T cell, uh, a, 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 better, a better response, better killing. All right, so I tried to kind of write out those steps for you here in another slide. Um, you know, if that's confusing, get some questions ready and make sure you ask in class on Monday or come to office hours. Uh, one other uh, thing that I wanted to kind of round back on, we talked about different kinds of antigens, exogenous antigens and endogenous antigens and autoantigens. We mentioned superantigens, and I want to circle back to that uh, now that we kind of understand T cell activation a little bit more. Uh, so uh, normally, this, this would be kind of... Um, well, so normally if a T cell uh, had a T cell receptor, you can see this shape is not quite right. The epitope that this macrophage is presenting is, is kind of a round epitope. So normally this T cell would uh, not recognize maybe that epitope. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that, sorry, that's what it shows it right here. So that epitope is not recognized. Um, but if this epitope is a super antigen, essentially that means that many, many, many different T cell receptors here are going to recognize that same epitope. Okay, so you get every time a T cell has a T cell receptor that recognizes that epitope, we get, you know, cytokine signals being released. Okay, so essentially here, like I said, many T cells, many T cell receptors uh, recognize a, a super antigen. Okay, and that's, you would think, oh, that's be good, that'd be good, then we'd get a really good response. 
No, we get way, way, way too much of response. Okay, I like this other uh, drawing that I got off the internet. Uh, you know, it said normally we would have like, you know, maybe one or two T cells that would recognize um, this looks like uh, a, must be a T helper cell because it's recognizing MHC class two. Um, if it's if it's a super antigen, then again, many 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 T cells recognize it way more than what's appropriate. Many maybe as many as twenty percent of the total T cells uh, in a, in the body would recognize it. And again, that's just overwhelming amount of cytokines produced, overwhelming amount of inflammation. So uh, one infection that we'll talk about maybe even next lecture is toxic shock syndrome. Uh, some of those antigens that are produced are super antigens, and that's why uh, patients go into, into shock, into you know, just this uncontrollable inflammation. All right, so I'll leave you with a question to think about, and we'll start with this one on Monday. It's one of my favorite questions. Sometimes I ask it on, the, on an exam, but uh, I'll just feed it to you here. So think about that, and uh, uh, we'll talk about it next time. So um, again, come with your questions, and we'll do a little bit of review, and then we'll, we'll keep going with uh, vaccines talk about that, maybe even get into staphylococcus. Um, but I will put off the vaccine homework until the next exam. Okay, so we'll make this just a little shorter exam for next Wednesday. All right, have a good weekend.